Second Kings 6 and 1. Mm -hmm. And the sons of the prophets said mm -hmm. to Elisha, yes. see now, the place where we dwell with you is too small for us. You, wait, wait. You notice it wasn't the man of God that had the issue. He never had an issue of the place being small or big. He was just there to meet the people. But his sons or the people that followed him was like, hey, this place is too small. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's not on the man that is leading you. It is your desires that has the ability to expand the vision. Oh, okay. All right. So the sons of the prophets were like, hey, this place is just too darn small. See, hey, this place is too small. And what happens? Please let us go to the Jordan. Wait, wait. You got to recognize that the place is too small, not me. No, and I'm not just talking about a church building. I'm talking about your personal lives. You can't wait for me to see. See, some of us in this season have already outgrown the place that we are in, but we got comfortable in that place. So frustration has been our friend. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. There's a place that you outgrown. That means God is like telling you to move. But because you're not willing to step out to do what is necessary, uh, you got comfortable within that place that is now too small for you. Yep, your circle is too small for you. No, 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 no. You have a lot of friends, but they, it's just too small. All right. All right. I don't know what place you have, but I'm telling you by the spirit of the Lord, that place is just too small. And this is why you're going nuts, because it is just too small. But yet God was waiting on them to provoke a reaction or to move or expand the place. God was not going to come down and expand the place for them. God was waiting on them to make a decision to expand their place. Ooh, are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, read. Please let us go to the Jordan and let every man take a beam from there. And let us make there a place where we may dwell. You can't, I'm sorry. You cannot put a timetable or a timestamp. Or create a process that time has to abide by when it comes to the vision that God placed in your spirit. You can't put a timeline on it. If God is telling you to do something, you cannot tell God it's going to take this long. Because if he already placed it in your spirit, that means it's already done. Yeah. Now I'm just telling you. And it's supposed to be big. It's supposed to be overwhelming. It's not the vision is, is not supposed to uh, agree with your abilities. It, it's supposed to go beyond to the point you need help. All right. Y all, this is the first time. That was for you. Okay? Now watch this read. And, you, and even though it's for her, it's for everyone that want to take it. Uh, it's taking too long because you put a time table on it. I mean, you said you told God this is the time it's going to take for it to happen. And that's why you're in the year of the line crosser. But haven't crossed lines. Am I making it? Okay? All right? But tell yourself, I'm crossing lines now. Crossing lines now. now, go ahead. Now, watch this. Read. Then one said, please consent. Well, he said, let us make there a place where we may dwell. So he answered, go. 
So the man of God said, what? Go. I'm telling you right now prophetically to go. No, you're waiting on the word. Here is the word. Go. And do. No, 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 no. Maybe not this side. Maybe, maybe you're waiting on the word. But here comes the word of the Lord. Go and do. I'm waiting on an answer. Go and do. Or watch this. Go and build. Is this okay? I hope you heard the word. Go and build. All right. Hey, man of God, this place is too small. We want to expand the territory, man. We can't dwell here anymore. Go and build. I'm not going to build for you. I put everything that you need to fulfill the task. Go and build. Watch this. Read. Is this okay? Then one said, uh -huh. please consent to go with your servants. And he answered, I will go. So in other words, listen, we're going to go and build, but at least come with us. That is a sign of honor. They recognized the grace yes. that was in their midst. Okay? But I'm not going to deal with that right now. Hey, Elijah, come with us so we can build. All right? Okay. Elijah said what? Please, then one said, please consent to go with your servants. He answered, I will go. I will go. Go ahead. So he went with them. And he went what? With them. And he went what? With them. God is with you. Amen. And God will go with you. Because who was the representative of God in that moment? Elijah. Elijah. All right, so God will go with you. Don't think or believe that you are by yourself. You are not by yourself. It is time to build. Am I making sense? Yes. yes. All right, go ahead, read. It's going to get good. Verse in a second. four So he went with them. So he what? Went with them. So he what? Went with them. Come on. And when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. And wait, they went to the Jordan. Mind you, the Jordan is the same place where Jesus got baptized at. All right? But I, wanna, I don't want to deal with that. I can, but I can't. <laughs> Maybe. All right? So they went to the Jordan. There, are, there must have been trees around the Jordan, yep. around that area. So they went to the Jordan with tools. Yep. No, 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 no. They went to the Jordan with tools. So they were practical with their approach. Some of us are in la-la land without being practical with certain things. No, no, no. Am I making sense? And so, let me help you. So if I want to get a house... Let me be practical as well. Yes. Let me work on my credit. Yes. And not wait for a supernatural occurrence to happen while I'm sitting and waiting on God. You need to have a healthy approach when it comes to the supernatural acts of God. You cannot just sit there and wait for something to drop. I know I sound like a broken record, but I've been saying it for years. Yeah. You cannot just sit there and wait for something to happen. You have to master your realities. Yeah. No, no, no. no. Let me, uh, I think you want me to stay over here because y'all saying amen. amen. I don't know if people on this side, y'all want me? All right, hold on. You have to master your reality. You cannot be 45 years old talking about I'm going to the uh, NFL. That is not a reality. It's true. No, 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 no. You cannot be 90 talking about my record is coming out. Yeah.
because you have not mastered your reality. And the reason why time was wasted because you never recognized the moment that was needed to. No, no, no. The moment was there for you to access and seize what God had for you. But some of us were blinded by our, you know, connections, our relationships. When Satan wants to derail your purpose, he will send somebody that, that will claim they love you. And they will waste your time and energy when you have destiny right in front of you. No, y'all just, is this okay? Yes, and if you're not careful, you will marry that distraction. Mercy will come and God will help, but you understand what I'm saying. Because now you're dealing with unnecessary cycles trying to keep something that was never meant to be kept. Everyone that's under the influence of my voice, you have a destiny. Oh, y'all, I just hit, I just, I just hit something. You, you have a destiny that is calling you. But distractions are there, and, and you're not dealing with reality. So you no longer are able to master what is need, what's needed to be mastered. What is that? Is that me? Am I hearing things? Was that a microphone? That was me. But I thought I turned it off. These, we, we good. Hey, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> when you want to cuss or want to get mad, just go, hey, uh, yeah, yeah. And if someone piss you off, just go, hey, uh, yeah, hey, uh, yeah, hey, uh, yeah, hey, uh, Masata. Because I was about to go ham on my people. I just said, hey, uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, are you ready? God wants to move you. Well, are you dealing with reality? Because God also deals with your reality. The super cannot come if the reality doesn't exist. Am I making speaking English? The natural has to exist in order the super to come. Y'all not talking to me. And most of us have been living in fantasy island. Thinking that the super, which is the supernatural, doesn't need the natural. So in other words, I go home and wait for phone calls. If I'm a salesperson, instead of going home and calling. Because if I provoke the prophecy... God will give me the ability, God will give me then the ability to fulfill the prophecy. The frustration comes because you're no longer practical. Am I thinking? You're not, you're, you're dealing with another, you're not dealing with reality. Hi, no, no. Yes, God will do some supernatural things to build our faith. But sometimes he's waiting on you to agree with his desires. You cannot say, I'm going to graduate and have my bachelor's degree without going to school. And you cannot say you're going to graduate college and you never study. No, let me say, you cannot just sit there and say, I got the Holy Ghost. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to study or nothing. You just let it be and wait for the diploma. Because God, you said I will graduate. 
No, 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 no. God, you said that I will graduate. That's the prophetic word. So because of that word, you're just sitting there. You're not studying. You're not reading. You're not doing anything. You have, you have not taken your tools that are needed to fulfill the prophetic word. I'm helping you or no? These guys took their tools. The sons of the prophets were like, listen, we need to build. We need to expand. And they took their tools with them. You have to embrace your tools. There are, there's always a toolbox in your prophetic word. No, 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 let me say it again. There's always a toolbox within your prophetic word. And you need to take those tools out of those toolbox out of that toolbox and begin to work the word because every prophetic word carries a responsibility. And you have to be responsible within prophecy. Even God who created everything was responsible. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. You are God and you created everything, God, but at the same time, you, you was, you was, uh, you was being responsible within your prophetic word. How? Because when Jesus was born, God was protecting him from dying before his time. Why do you have to protect something if you are God? You can just tell the people to die and it'll just wither away. Why do you have to go through all of these steps by giving a dream to Joseph to tell Joseph to take his family to Egypt? Because someone else, because the king is after him. Yeah. Am I making, no. Come on. Am I in the book? Am I in the book or no? Am I in the book or no? Because y'all just looking at me. Y'all, see, <laughs> that's why you're broke. I'm not trying to beat you up. I'm just telling you the truth. Because you didn't know how to access your tools within the prophecy. We're waiting for something while your tools is right in front of you to work the word. So God, when he prophesied about the coming of the Lord, when Jesus came on the scene, he was responsible. He gave the vision to Joseph and told Joseph, King Herod is after his life. Go to Egypt. Why would you have to go through all of that, Lord? You are God. Just move your hand. No, I have to be responsible within my own word because the word represents my character. Jesus. They don't know. You don't know. Okay. One bank told you no. When God told you to build that business, you went to one bank and you received the no, and then you stopped right there and said it's over. But there's 50 other banks. Am I making sense? But just one no tears you down. As if the prophetic word doesn't hold weight. The prophetic word was in their midst because yeah. Elijah was there. That's right. yeah. Elijah represented the mouth of God. Yeah. Right. True. So they went to the word to expand. Yes. Come on. Uh, no, no, no. Ah! They went to the word of God to expand. Yes. You waiting on permission. You waiting for permission, I mean, to do something. Now, I'm not talking about you having your own uh, ministry and then you just fight people. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about that vision that God has laid on your heart. He wants you to be responsible within that vision because the word is on it. 
Amen. No? I got three amens. And, <laughs> right? So let's, let's, I hope I'm helping people. So you see how God was responsible within his own word? You have to learn how to manage your prophetic word. You can't act dumb within prophecy. Just because the prophetic word came that I will never die or I will have a long life does not mean I'm going to go to uh, the deli and get 35 Coca-Colas. <laughs> because pleasure can kill you if you are not aware. Ooh, yeah, pleasure has the ability to kill you. Don't you know people got AIDS? Because of pleasure? Herpes through pleasure? Y'all didn't like that? Y'all act like y'all saints and I'm the only sinner in this. <laughs> I'll never forget, I told this story. I was a, listen, I came from church and I went to get a prostitute after church. No, like four hours after. So it was at nighttime. <laughs> yeah, yeah, can I tell my story? This is when I was young in the faith. <laughs> so I needed something. So I went and I saw this woman. I said, yeah, it's time. <laughs> but I was scared at the same time because I didn't want anyone to see me. And because I didn't want anyone to see me, that told God I didn't have fear. I have to fear God, not eyes. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's why I'm the same person, the way you see me now. It's the exact person you would see at my house. It's a fact. I'm the same person, don't they, around me. Yep. Hey, why? Because I don't, I don't, I'm not here to please eyes. Amen. Uh, amen. You know, I'm changing. But if I say Negro, I just say it. <laughs> I'm not saying You get what I'm saying. All right. So I told the prostitute, I said, yeah, I want, uh, let's talk. It's, it's, it's time. It's time to get it on. And then she said, uh, yeah, she said, let me go. And I'm a Christian. And she said, okay, let me go. I got to go, you know, to my guy. Right away, it's, I knew it was a pimp. So because I knew he was a pimp that she was going to, I was afraid that I might know that pimp. So once she left the car, yep. I fled. Yep. Little frustrated, but fear came over me yeah. at the same time. Yeah. So, you know, I was just like, oh, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Okay. Three weeks later, or two weeks later, I'm at the uh, bodega. What you call those things? Bodega. No, it's, you know, whatever the hell it is. The corner store, the block. And I'm with my cousin at the time. Uh, we call him mad because he just looks mad all the time. <laughs> he just looked mad all the time. His nickname was Mad. No, facts. Mad, come here. Hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and so, and so I'm sitting there, and he had a nerve to be prophetic. <laughs> He's like, yo, do you know that woman? Because she came out of the store. I'm in the car. She came out of the store. He's like, yo, you know that woman? I'm like. <laughs> and then a lying demon came upon me. Hey, you know that woman? No. <laughs> I said, no. No, 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 no. 
And you say, yeah. You know that girl has AIDS? Wow. At that moment, I disassociated myself with my cousin as well. I was like, I ain't playing with you, God. Thank you, but I ain't playing. I'm not going to allow pleasure to kill me. No, let me help you. Unmanaged pleasure. Let me say it again. Unmanaged pleasure. It's my life. Don't get mad at me. It's, it's, I'm talking about my life. But I learned something that day. God is serious about my life. But the enemy wants to hijack my life at the same time. Is this okay? Am I getting somewhere? All right, I'm going to help you more. You ready? Because you're breaking out today. All right, now watch this. Read. Verse 5, but as one was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. Okay, now, one, a prophet, was cutting down a tree. But he is a prophet as well. A, a son of a prophet, but he was a prophet himself, was cutting down a freaking tree. He was working with his tools. He's, prof, he's a prophet, but he's cutting trees. While he was cutting with his tool, he's fulfilling prophecy at the same time. He's, he is mastering his reality. He knows that he had the permission to expand or seek for a larger place. That was his word. But yet he was responsible within his word by taking his axe and using it. Not just speaking to the tree and saying the tree will fall now. Yes, it will fall. How, Lord, what is in your hand? God only reveals himself through your actions. And if you're not being active, how can he supply strength? No, no. Strengthen me, Lord, what? To sit and entertain anxiety? God wants to, su- God wants to supply strength to you when you are active within the vision that he placed in your spirit. This is a boring word. I know this is boring. Y'all, y'all want me to say something else like, ah! <laughs> This is going to be really good. This is going to be good. Because the prophecy works with responsibility. And God also had to be responsible within his prophetic word. And that's just going to fly to you. Especially if it can't see you. So they're in their location. They're, They're cutting down trees to get logs. To build. To what build? To what build? They never ask God for the axe. They never ask God for the trees. Because he already knows what you need. Your desire is already supplied. Uh, Just said something. Your desire is already supplied. They desired a larger location so the trees were there. Am I I making sense? Read. Uh, it's okay. But as one was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. The iron axe head. fell into the what? Water. Woo! Is it, was it the Jordan? Yeah, it was in the Jordan. Yep. Where Jesus was. And when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. And the axe fell in the water. Into the Jordan. Where the prophet will be. Yep. Oh, Jesus. John the Baptist was a prophet as well. That's right. Who carried the mantle of Elijah's father. Yep. Elijah. That's right. 
I don't have, see, I don't want to go through that because that's going to bore y'all. So let, no, 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 it's good. No, it's all right. So now the axe fell into the water. While he's working, the axe fell. Yep. Things happen when you walk. When you decide to do something that's beyond you. You have to learn how to plan for stuff. Plan for things that will try to stop you. If I make speaking English, you got to learn how to plan for, for the things that will, that will try to come to distract you. Distract you. You got to plan for some no's sometimes. Even though you carry a yes. That's right. That's right. Come on. Because while he was cutting the tree, his axe fell. But God, you told me I have a right to build. Right, right. But now something happened? Come on. Why did you allow this to happen? Jesus. Why would you allow this to happen, God, when you told me to go? Yep. It's true. That prophet could have easily complained to God like that, but he didn't do it. But he didn't do it. Oh, Lord. This is, I think this is the wrong word. I promise you this is the right word. I hope this is the right word for someone. Because when you decide to fulfill prophecy, stuff will happen. Thinking not strains of the fiery darts that will come to test your faith. But yet we get so bamboozled with the arrows, we'd be like, oh, God, no. God is saying, no, now I'm just going to sit. God, you said, no, now. You told me I received the word. I did my halaba halaba. And now, Tuesday, my axe fell. My tools are no longer working. So now I'm stressed. Am I making sense? But who was with him? The man of God. Because he asked the man of God to come. Wow, let me just put that right here. Place it right in your spirit. You have to invite God into your plans. If God is not in your plans, you are in. Because the man of God was, was, was the, um, Elijah was the man of God's answer. The son and the prophet, the Elijah and the son. The son said, Elijah, come with me. Boom. Now they're working. The tool is no longer working. But now the man of God, who represents God, was with him. So his answer was already with him. Because he invited his answer. God is your answer. Learn how to invite him. The Bible says in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Where is the acknowledgement? Am I making sense? You can't just go without inviting the one who gave you the strength to go. Not in some of your ways. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. This is a boring word? Am I helping two, three people here? Have you invited God into your plans? Because he's waiting. He is what? Waiting. Hi. Come, Lord. Yes, okay, I'll come. Something happened. Instead of the son of man saying, the son of the son of the prophet saying, why, 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 why? He said, hey, watch, read. I'm going to mess you up. You got to be responsible within your answer. The answer is yes. Be responsible within the yes. Right. 
Yes, you will go to that school. Now be responsible within that yes. yes. Am I making sense yes. here? Yes, yes. You're talking right. Go ahead, read. I'm talking. The iron axe head fell into the water, and he cried out I and said, I don't care how big your vision yeah. may be. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big God. Yeah. That's right. right. talking right. Oh, procrastination will freaking kill you. Yeah, well, yeah. That's why. That's true. When the moment presents itself and tells you, fulfilled now. You cannot just say, ah, uh, take care of it tomorrow. Tomorrow is holding moments of its own for you. You are in your now. And your now is screaming, take care of this right now. Take care of that right now. Actually, an angel is next to you now. Yeah. And telling you it is time. Do this. Do that. Do this. Do that. Get up. Do this. Ah, wait till tomorrow. Then tomorrow becomes three years. Who am I talking to? Don't allow your tomorrow to be years. Amen. Amen. Am I making sense? Yes, yes, yes. I'm not getting any amens. I don't think people like what I'm saying, Erica. Are they? Jesus Christ. I think I got work. <laughs> now watch this read. And so, he sh while he was working. In, in NLT, 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 hurry up. But as one of them was cutting a tree, his axe fell, his axe head fell into the river. Oh, sir, he cried. It was a borrowed axe. What? It was a what? It was a borrowed axe. See, this man, this prophet, this son of a prophet was responsible within his answer. To the point he borrowed. He asked the Lord, hey, this place is too small. Can we go somewhere else to enlarge our territory? Yes. You don't see nowhere in Scripture that God told him to borrow. But he borrowed an axe because he was responsible within his prophecy. So he knew how to handle other people's finances. Other people's money. Y'all yeah. not, y'all not talking to me. Yeah, I'm boring y'all. I'm boring y'all. Right he was like, "Listen, I'm re I'm gonna be responsible. Can I borrow this axe? An axe that I never worked for, but I need this axe to work. Yeah. Money will never work for you if you're not willing to work." I say that a freaking get. Let me say that again. Money will never work for you if you are not willing to work. Is this good? So he's like, okay. He borrowed the axe. So now he became a manager. He managed the very thing that he borrowed. You cannot borrow money and then live for pleasure. You asking for a hundred grand for your business and then give 50. Oh, forget that. You give 20 to your kids so they can enjoy. While that hundred grand is not for your kids that you borrowed. It's for the vision that you are willing to expand for your kids and for God. Am I all right? Is this okay? I hope I'm helping somebody. Read. So while he bought, y'all don't even know how to. Okay, if the son borrowed the axe, that means he was social. He was not antisocial. He knew the power of relationship.
your prosperity is on the opposite side of ego. When your ego is in the way, you will be filled with so much pride that you, you don't have to talk to anyone, speak to anyone, you know, you're just like, mm, I'm better than you. Don't be judged by the cover of someone's book. Or you don't judge the cover of someone's book. Because you don't know what they're holding. They're probably holding a bridge for you. You're talking right. Amen. And so because that man was social as a man of God, he knew how to, he knew how to use his connections. Because you're not going to ask... I'm not going to ask to borrow something from you if I don't know you. So obviously we have, we, we have history. So I knew how to maintain my connections. Some Christians know how to burn bridges. I'm here to let you know, please do not burn your bridge. Because God will use people to get you where you need to. It is impossible for you to eat the whole pie by yourself. And that's why most people are not going anywhere because they want the whole pie to themselves. Not knowing that God gave you the vision of the pie, but there's other gifts that will eat off that same pie to help you see your pie. No, boy, am I making sense? Now I don't want to share. I want this all for myself. They're going to try, they trying to steal from me, so I don't want them to have it. So let me keep it for myself. You will all, then you will stay by yourself and brokenness will stay with you. Broke, busted, and disgusted. Because, listen, when you have a vision, that vision requires you to share. Not one man build a bridge. One man had a, an idea, but it took people to bring that idea forth. Am I? Uh, I'm by myself. Yes, and I got 47 seconds left. Instead of complaining, be active. Don't allow, your, don't allow the no's that you hear to stop you from being active because you know what you carry. The no is not carrying your vision. But you have to know what they don't know, even though they're spewing, they're spewing out no's. You have to know what you know. Yes. I, I went to talk to you. So you know what God has told you. I carry a yes. Now you hear a no, but you know what you carry. Yes. So you cannot become discouraged when you hear a no. Yes. That no is just telling you to try again. Yes. Why? Why? Because... When you, if you went to one place and they said a no, that means there's a person within that no that's no longer, that's not for you. Yeah. You got to locate your person. Yes. There's a person within your yes. Yeah. My, it may be a person that you need to minister to. Yeah. Uh, there will be a time. Amen. I think I'm preaching. I don't know. Am I talking? I need someone to say I feel like I'm just like, y'all in La La Land or something. Is this, is this a good word for you? Are y'all taking this? Yeah, you, I think I'm crazy. But yeah, if you have a child and you're speaking to your child and the child is just looking at you like this. <laughs> you, like, you, you don't hear me? The father's like, y'all, y'all don't hear me. I'm, I'm letting you know something. That's right. So he's working. 
something happened. Something bad happened. Mm -hmm. But the bad will always turn or work out for your yes. good. Yes. Amen. Amen. Not sometimes. It will always work for your good. If you are a child of God, it will always, not sometimes, all things work together for the good to them that love the Lord. And to them that are called according to his what? Purpose. Am I making sense? Don't look at the negative uh, uh, situation and then you meditate on that negativity to the point you reject your own vision or God's purpose for your life. Another thing. Let me help you. Don't allow blood to get in the way. Am I making sense? Never allow blood to get in the way of the purpose that God has placed in your spirit. Y'all not talking to me. All right, lay down. Lay, lay, you lay down. You lay down here. No, dang, y'all can't see him. Just know, just this man, well, stand up. I hope I'm helping someone. I got to stop. You see him? You sure? You see all right, lay down. No, 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 stand back up. We, we're related. This is my blood. Okay, lay down. This blood doesn't even know the God that I serve. For their blood. Now God has placed purpose in me. With the toolbox. Because there's a prophetic word hovering that is demanding me to use my toolbox. But because of blood, I feel that I have to run to their beck and need. Mom said, and now I waste time trying to, no, don't lay right there. Just give me your arm. Trying to pull my relative up who doesn't even want to get up on it. So, they begin to break my back. They become unnecessary weight because they don't understand that they are responsible to carry their own weight. Y'all not talking. You stand up, sit up. You're working out today. The weight that is on this young man belongs to him, not me. That's his own weight, not my weight. But we're related. I don't give a hot dog. That is his own weight, not mine. I don't care if it's your cousin, your son, your daughter. I don't care who, the blood. This is your own weight, not mine. But because they're laying there, work it out, boy. And I have responsibilities over here. I, I become ignorant and begin to help the blood that really doesn't need help. Because my relative does not have the want to. So if I begin to pull, now I'm wasting years and time trying to pull heavy weight. And the Bible tells me, lay aside every weight that will easily beset you. The reason why, because the reason why the weight is now heavy, because there's no responsibility. My relative is not taking responsibility to carry his own. So you will see five years, 10 years pass, 20 years pass. No change, no nothing. Because you're trying to lift a weight that is no longer suitable for your back. Making sense? 
We could be friends, but if you're not willing to get up, I can't, I, I'm not here to help you then. Help likes to see itself. Help wants to see if you want it. Jesus, the help, went to the man at the pool of Bethesda. Do you want to be made? Do you want to be healed? Do you want to succeed? Am I making sense? Or do you want to hang out with people that are not equipped to handle your purpose? I'm talking. I'm, I think I'm speaking... Am I making sense here? You be loyal to offended people. When the offended cannot stand the mouth that you honor. And, that, and then that person becomes a weight. You still lay there. And while you're trying to look to see if you can bring them back. They're, they're pulling you. Yep. yep, this is right. That's what they said. I believe it. This is. But you forgot about all the miracles that was done within the house. <laughs> it might make sense. Tell your neighbor to let go. Let go. No, say it again. Let go. If you call me, that does not mean I have to get up. No, 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 no. Ring, ring, ring. Help me. You know, that's us all the way. Wait, hold on. I hope I don't break this mic. You have purpose. You got the tools in your hand. Ring, help me. Where's your assignment? You dropped it. Now you're complaining. Now you will hate the person that you're trying to help. For you was never assigned to help them in the first place. So now you're wasting time and energy because they don't have the want to. Now mind you, if you if you're not aware of this truth, this one is connected to 25 other people. So now, your purpose is family, not God. But the, those 25 people were never your family in the first place. They actually need you to reach your destined place. Y'all not talking to me. <laughs> people crazy, man. People will miss it. People will miss it. Wow. <laughs> now sciatic nerve hits so your walk is different so now you focused on the pain and now on the journey Woo! Uh, ow 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 the devil ow But you believe it's a noble thing to help a distraction. When you haven't reached, when you haven't reached your destined place. Can I say this? You haven't moved out of your place yet? So you don't have time to entertain. When the prophetic word is saying, come! Hurry! Do this! Now! Wait! I have to help! Am 
I'm making sense. Is God a liar? So why is it taking too long? E.T. on steroids. E.T., E.T. Entertainment night, you know, they, they used to have that. Entertainment tonight. In, in, entertainment tonight, you remember that? Entertainment. Yeah, E.T. E.T. boo-hoo. Okay. Get up, son. I'm allowed to help you if you have the want to. Because I cannot allow your weight to kill me. You're no longer a baby, so I'm not responsible to carry you. Yeah. You ever talk to, speak, uh, talk to your friend on the phone, and they just laid out all the garbage that was in them? Yep. And then after that, you hung up, you was like, ah. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Call me. And then they called again, you'd be like, nah. Ring! Do not disturb. <laughs> Am I the only one? No. Learn how to use your caller ID. No. Yeah, use your spiritual caller ID. No. Am I? Hello! Y'all want me to stop? Just tell me. I have to... Because you're breaking out this Sunday. Yeah. Am I making yes. Hello. Come on. Hello. 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 Now watch this. This is God is so good. Amen. It's time to be practical. Yes. Manage your realities. Yes. Don't be stupid within prophecy. When I receive my money, I do tithe. Yes, but I'm also going to save. Yep. And I will invest. Yeah. If you're not practical when it comes to your money, you will blame God for not having yeah. no money. <laughs> this is so simple. Come on, Tokoba. We like to run away from storms within the prophecy. Let me help you. There are storms within your prophecy. There will always be storms. Like the axe was the storm to the man. But yet he borrowed the axe to cut. Lord, I'm done. Yeah, I'm done. It's three. I'm finished. I have to do part two. Jesus. Let me just share this with you and that's it. And I'm finished. Just go and get it, please. Don't sit there and wait. You hear that sound right now? It's annoying. That's what God hears. When there's no movement. Let me help you. You cannot succeed on your own. Cap with the caps. Okay, but let me share this with you. You ready? Read. Go ahead. After the axe, he tells uh, him what? Verse 6, where did it fall? The man of God asked. When he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick and threw it into the water. He showed him the place yep. where it fell. Where it yeah. fell. That's right. I'll do part two on that. Now watch this. Read. After he showed them the place, yep. Elisha cut a stick and threw it into the water mm -hmm. at that spot. He at that spot. We don't like to share the trauma. I, I'm done. I won't be done. No, no, no. I don't care. Like I said, y'all like this. So, no, nah, I'm not I'm finished. No, nah, I can't. Yeah. You know, as a Christian, a lot of things begin to happen. A lot of stuff happens. Mistakes and all stuff, you know, happened in your life while being a Christian. 
but we don't like to show God the spots. Oh, we don't show God the places where the trauma is. Because the place swallowed the axe. Swallowed your ability to fulfill and build. And so you don't want to show God the places that swallowed your axe. You say things like, I need to keep this to myself. And then you'll be by yourself because you kept something that flourish in isolation. That flourishes in isolation. Am I making, I'm done. I'm finished. I'm, I'm done. I'm finished. I, I want to say this. He threw the stick. He threw the stick. He threw the the, the, he threw the cross. He threw the cross. He threw the stick. He threw Christ. In the place that swallowed his tool, his axe. Am I making sense here? Am I making sense here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't be afraid to be naked before God. Because God knows your problem, but, but are you willing to tell him? Are you willing to share the place that swallowed your gifts? No, it's okay. Because I want to help you, but you're too busy hiding. That means pride is there. And God can never help pride. This is it. This is the last verse. Last verse of the day. I promise you. Watch, read. Elisha cut a stick and threw it into the water uh -huh. at that spot. Uh -huh. Then the axe head floated to the surface. Another translation said the axe head swam. Okay? So it came back up. It came back up. I'm finished. Watch this. I'm done. I promise you. I'll do part two. And watch what the man of God says, because I could spend an hour of just the axe coming up. I'm here to let you know your tools are coming up. Yeah. The things that you need to fulfill God's plan in your life is coming up because the cross is right there. That's why Jesus went to the same exact spot that swallowed the axe. Even the prophet was in the same spot where the axe fell. Yep. That's right. And he was speaking to the Pharisees. They said, you trees, evil. If you don't bear fruit, the axe is right at the root. That's what John the Baptist, John the Baptist said. He was, talking, he was speaking on an axe at a root. So now watch this. Watch this. Read. This is it. Now when the the tool came up, because y'all all got excited. Yeah, my tool is coming up. Okay. That's a prophetic word yep. with responsibility. Yep. Come on. Keep talking, right? Because you cannot have the super if there's no natural. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Come on. The super came because of the natural. That's right. He was working. Yep. It fell. He, he, didn't, he didn't hide himself. He didn't hid from the man of God. He actually went towards the man of God and said, hey, this happened to happen. Boom, 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 boom. Now the supernatural happened. But look at the man of God. Look at the man's responsibility. This is it. This is it. Watch this. Verse 7. Grab it, Elisha said. No. After the axe head swam up, it floated back up. The man of God was not going to grab it. He told the son, now grab it. Be willing to get wet. Be willing to be wet. You know what I mean? Something like that. Be willing to get wet. Because now the water, 
needs to experience victory. The water needs to experience healing. Ah, the trauma that you experience will become your ministry. If you are willing to get wet in a place of victory, y'all not talking to me. Oh, you're going to get wet in this season. If you're not willing to get wet, you will never experience the supernatural. But if you want to experience the supernatural, you need to grab it. That means you need to get wet. Am I, this was good today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell your neighbor to get wet, get wet. You got to get wet. You can't be 40 years old, 50 years old, 60 years old, having daddy issues. I, I was told that someone lost, lost their father. Who was that? We are praying for you in Jesus' name. And then be free when it comes to guilt. Sometimes guilt will come, like, I could have done this more, I could have done that, I could have done this, chill, mm -mm. in Jesus' name. God is going to comfort you through your mourning, okay? But be encouraged, all right? In Jesus' name. Sorry to hear that, but at least you're here. Amen. Are y'all with me? I'm done. Grab it. No, no, if you can see it, you have the ability to reach for it. Another translation said reach for it, right? Reach and grab it. What did it say? Everyone stand. Because now I'm finished. Go, go, go. Am I okay? Yeah. Therefore he said, pick it up for yourself. So he reached out his hand and took it. He reached out his hand and took it. Because the instructions, the, the instructions was this. Pick it up for yourself. Yeah. No, you want God to pick it up for you. But God brought it to you. But you have to be willing to get wet. In the place of healing. In the place of victory. You will no longer remind yourself of that trauma. Because it no longer has a mouth to swallow. Had to regurgitate your axe. <laughs> you have the tools that you need, this, no matter your background. You have the tools that you need to build. I don't care what you see, I don't care how you feel. You have the tools to build. Here's the prophetic word for this house. I said all of that to say this. That last verse, reach out and what? Pick it up for yourself. So he reached out his no, no, hand no, and no, took it. No, no, pick it up for yourself. Say it again. Pick it up for yourself. That's the word for today. This is you breaking out. You have to what? Pick it up for yourself. No, 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 no. You have to what? Pick it up for yourself. You have to what? Pick it up for yourself. You have to what? Let, let me tell you this. You know God is not going to brush your teeth, right? You got to brush your own teeth, right? Let's, let's stop being stupid. Let's stop waiting on God to brush your teeth. Or teeth. You, you, there's some responsibility that you have to take ownership of in your life. That's just period. Case calls. Amen. And, and have good credit. You're not supposed to get a credit card and think you're blessed because you have a credit card. You got to learn how to manage borrowed money. Amen. 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 Your credit should not be 500, 350, and you are a Christian. 
I don't care. I said it and I will say it again. Listen, because if you go to the car dealership and they see your credit, and if it's 550, 300, 290, you think you have the right or the power to now minister? They don't want your God when you can't manage other people's money. But imagine coming to the bank with a 7, 7.30, 8. Now, the anointing is like, yes! That's right. That's right. So now they're like, whoa, yeah, I see your credit. Wow, now their ear is ready to receive because you are responsible within your prophetic word. Who am I talking so be practical. Amen? Amen? Deal with your realities. Don't run away from your responsibilities. Amen? If you stink, take a shower. I know I sound crazy, but am I making sense? If you, if you know you stinking, shower! All right. I'm just saying, amen. Even in married couples, you know you, you need it. I'm done. <laughs> Don't think love is supposed to happen when you didn't take responsibility by washing yourself before takeout. I don't care. I don't care. I have to be real. You got to learn how to check yourself. You'd be shocked. I've been in this ministry for, I've been in this game for a long time. I had to counsel people that lacked hygiene etiquette. You want, you want some love and you, amen. Please pray for my marriage. No, the shower is the answer. The shower, and you got some nice smelling good stuff. Just use it. Don't be saying, you have to receive me because God said it. It's for the married people. Mary. Amen. So you want to work on your marriage? Please look sexy. Both parts, you know? Look at me. Now I'm at the gym. I'm, I'm, lying. I'm, 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 I'm not lying. <laughs> but I, I'm, I'm at the gym. I'm, I'm... Isaiah. Where's my son? He's somewhere? It's with the kids. Okay, Nazaria with the kids too. Okay, I, okay, my wife is here. I go to the gym now, right? I'm at the gym. Am I at the gym? Yes, sir. I'm in. I'm in a little bit. <laughs> but at least... At least God sees my faith. <laughs> if you don't like what you see in the mirror, change it. Of course I got swag still, <laughs> but still, I got to like, am I making sense? Four more steps, let's go. One. At least God is like, amen, amen, amen. Am I making sense? Let's be real and not fake. Amen. Money is trying to look for you. Your destiny is calling you. Come to me now. The word for today. Because you will break out of this. Amen. Is what? Pick it up. Say it again. It tell seven people. Prophesy to them and tell them. Ah! Is this, are you hearing me? You better pick it up for yourself. You better learn how to pick it up for yourself. 
Don't wait for the email. Send an email. Don't wait for the phone call. Call. It is time to pick it up for your... I prophesy before the end of this year, you will pick up things for yourself. In the name of Jesus. Some people may say, because I heard someone, some people may say, man, church is too long. So is the grave. You, you get what I'm saying? So is the grave. You know you need, you can get help here. The grave will never help you. So don't allow the enemy to make you see the church as your enemy. Am I making sense? Yes. Because once he does that, the grave is... I don't want to go to that church anymore. The grave is like... The devil's crazy, y'all. The devil's evil. And death doesn't care how old you are. Death takes babies. I told my people, you better fear God. Stop playing crazy like you're entitled. You got to learn how to be responsible in this life. Are y'all hearing me? I'm only sitting here to tell you the freaking truth. I want you to tell me the truth. If my breath stink, just say, I'm about to meet somebody important, and you're just tolerating the hot air without telling me the truth. You'll be pissed at me, right? Because then once I go to a prominent person and begin to discuss some things, and their face is like, <laughs> and then they gossip about me and say my breath is hot, then I will come to you and be like, why you, why you didn't tell me? I was with you. You didn't tell me my breath was hot. You be pissed. So you, I don't want you to act like that towards me. I'm freaking tell you the truth. Because I, I, <laughs> my boss is God. If I wanted to follow people, I would have had a thousand people by now. Let me say that again. If I wanted to follow, if I wanted to follow the feelings of people and not God, I would have I would have had have um, would have had um, a thousand people plus by now if I was governed by people's emotions when truth was present. So you know, so no one can th threaten me with their membership. It might make sense. Y'all know who those that started with me. Look, we have a whole, like a basically, basically a whole new church. Am I making sense? A whole new church. Trust me. Just imagine. Hey, don't live like that. You're not anointed to walk on eggshells. I don't care how you feel. If truth, I'll tell you the freaking truth. And I don't give a hot dog Every day all day. I don't care. It's true. He's mean. No, it's love. Yep. It's true. No, he's mean. The reason why he's mean because you never had a man in your household. So when a man carries authority, you think he's evil. Because you don't know how a man is, the presence of a man in a home. That's right. Let me tell you something. A real man never acts like a woman. Promise you. It's just facts. We won't tell you straight. Get it together. That's love. Get it together. You get what I'm saying? You, you're, not, you're not 16. Get it together. Make sense? That's what men do. That is our love. The, the mother would be like, no, don't talk to the kids like that.
because kids need that. Trust me, they need that authority. The, the, Satan is not after the women. He's after the men. You don't see half-naked men on billboards. You see half-naked women on billboards. Why? He's after the head of the house. That's it. Give Jesus a hand clap. Tell yourself, take it. Grab it. Take it for yourself. No, Blake, I, got, I need to take this thing for myself. Say it. I need to take this for myself. I need to take it for myself. I need to take it for your what? I don't know what your thing is. I don't know what grabbed or swallowed your, uh, I don't know what thing that swallowed your tools. I don't know what it is that swallowed your tools. I don't know which tool you had that was swallowed up. Am I making sense? But call that thing. Grab it now. Take it now. Build now. Who told you not to finish? Who told you not to finish? You didn't tell. Stop lying to God and telling God that you tried everything. Grab it. All right. So say, Lord. Lord. Thank you for this word. Thank you for this word. Now, I now I know. It's my time, it's my time. To, build. to build. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. I prophesy your breakout season starts now.